So here in this video, we're going to look at states of matter, just a quick review of states of matter, and then changes of state and the energy that's associated with those changes. So just a quick review of our states of matter, which you learned all about in grade 9 and then again in grade 10. So solids hold the shape of their container and they have a fixed volume. Uh, liquids will take the shape of the container, but all their volume always stays the same. Gases will fill the container and both the, take the shape of the container and the volume of a container. So when particles change state, they, there's an energy transfer involved, and that's called latent heat. And so it's the amount of thermal energy that's absorbed or released when a, a substance changes state. And again, we're measuring that in joules. So specific um, latent heat values um, are given, again, in a chart. So you'll either be given those um, on your test or you'll have to look them up. So we have heats of fusion. Heats of fusion are for things that are at the freezing temperature or the melting temperature, because that temperature is the same. So freezing and melting would be our fusion. And then heat of vaporization is for boiling or condensing. So really you just have to read the question carefully and figure out which, which um, chart you're reading from and you're good to go. And to figure out your um, energy changes, you just have to take the mass. Again, that's going to be measured in kilograms. And then our latent heat is joules per kilogram. So that way our kilograms cancel out and that's how we get our value for Q. Let's do, just do one quick example. So we have solid gold is often melted. So that means we are looking for our latent heat of fusion when we go to look it up. So melted is that solid liquid phase. How much thermal energy is released? So we're looking for our Q value by 550 grams of molten gold when it changes into a solid. So we want to change that mass to kilograms and then we're going to go look up the latent heat of fusion. So we get 1.1 times 10 to the power of 5 joules per kilogram. And then our formula is Q equals M. And then in the formula on the previous slide, I had an X and that X can be replaced with either the F for fusion or the V for vaporization, just rather than having two different equations. So when you do that, you get 60,500 joules. So we'll divide that by 1,000. So we get 60.5 kilojoules. And we need to round that to 61 kilojoules because the 550 probably just has two and the latent heat effusion definitely has two. So that's really all there is to it. Um, sometimes you might be given the heat released or absorbed and the mass and then asked to figure out the latent heat effusion. And then because those are standard values, you can actually use those to identify a substance. But really it's a pretty straightforward uh, formula to use.